Amen, amen. It's so good to be with you this morning on the first day of the year, this New Year's Day. I've got to be honest with you, um, my heart's a little heavy this morning. I know you guys have been praying for my grandmother last night between 9.30 and 10 o'clock. She went on to be with the Lord. And so um, even though that selfishly we'll miss her, I know that uh, because of the love and the faith that we have in Jesus that one day I'll see her again walking the streets of gold. And so I thank you all for your prayers. I want you to know that our family felt that. And, um, and our prayers were answered because she no longer feels any pain. She no longer is suffering. She's uh, with the Father in heaven today, and we're so thankful for that. I've been praying for a couple weeks since Pastor Gary um, asked me to speak this morning about what the Lord would have us to, to hear. And I got to thinking about, you know, what, what, would, what would I want to hear the first day of the year? And the Lord began to put things on my heart and, um, and began to, to take my life into perspective the last couple years, things that I do on January 1st. Me and my wife, we always sit down and we come up with goals and, and uh, resolutions, New Year's resolutions for the new year. How many of you have made a New Year's resolution this year coming up for 2023? I got to looking up the 10 most common New Year's resolutions that we make here in the United States. The 10 most common New Year's resolutions that we make here in the United States. And I've made most of these myself. The first one is to exercise more. Lord knows we could all do that. Exercise more and eat a little bit less and lose weight. Is that anybody's goal this year? That's definitely one of mine. I want to get this, this last 20 pounds off right here. Um, I'd love to do that. The, the next one is to get organized, learn a new skill or hobby, live life to the fullest, save more money or spend less money, quit smoking, spend more time with friends and family, travel more, read more. These are all great resolutions, great goals that we have. You know me, anytime I speak, I have to give you definitions because I'm a simple-minded man from Welburn, so I like to dive into Webster's Dictionary to make sure that I know what these words mean. Webster's defines a resolution as a firm decision to do or not to do something. But this is fact. They polled over 30,000 people with New Year's resolutions last year. Do you know the average number of days that it took most people to break their New Year's resolutions? 32 days. Somebody said one. Somebody has no faith in, in anybody today. 32 days is the average amount of time that it takes us to break our New Year's resolutions. So as I started to dive into God's Word, God began to show me, Dalton, I do not want you to have just another New Year's resolution. Because uh, what a resolution is, they're self-imposed. Self, self-willed and self-propelled ideas that do not always include the power of God. This morning as we talk, I'm not asking you to make another New Year's resolution. What I'm praying for for our church family going into 2023 this year is a New Year's revelation. A New Year's revelation from God. You say, Dalton, what's a revelation? It's a surprisingly and previously unknown fact, especially one that is made known in a dramatic way. The divine or supernatural disclosure to humans of something related to the human existence or the world. What I've prayed for for you today, if you're sitting in these seats today, is that you don't come in here and this year make another New Year's resolution, but together God reveals himself to us this year in a way that you will be forever changed. What I want us to pray for this year is a revelation. And the word that God kept pressing on my heart, impressing on my heart, impressing on my heart, is a word that is blessed. And what I pray for my church family what I pray for myself, what I pray for my daughter Scarlett and my wife Courtney and our family is we always pray that the Lord would continue to bless us. And blessed is probably a word that we use so much as Christians. It's such a spiritual word that we use all the time. Oh, I'm so blessed. Somebody will sneeze. What do we say? Bless you. Oh, I pray blessings over your life. We always talk about blessed as if it's some sort of fortunate encounter that has to happen. When we think about the word blessed, the time that this word is used most is found in the Beatitudes in Matthew 5. And when we think about the word blessed, you think about 
good experiences, right? If somebody says, I'm blessed, then you think, man, if that person wins the lottery, that person's blessed. If that person has a beautiful wife and beautiful children, that person's blessed. If they make a lot of money and they drive a nice car and they dress well, that person's blessed. But I want you to look at the situation that was going on here in Matthew. And I want you to tell me that if in your mind you would see this person as blessed. Can we do that this morning? In Matthew 5, starting in verse 3, it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Listen to this one. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are the poor in spirit, those who mourn, the meek. All of these things are situations that you would say, how is that being blessed? How is that person blessed? But this morning and this year, God wants to reshape our vision of what it looks like to be blessed by him. The blessedness is a spiritual state of well-being, a deep, joy-filled contentment that can't be shaken by poverty, by grief, by famine, by persecution, by war, or any other trial or tragedy that we face in life. To be blessed this year is to experience the full impact of God's presence in our life. If you don't get anything out of what we talk about today, I want you to know that God desires for you to be blessed. But it's a decision that we have to make in our hearts, in the way that we walk, in the way that we live our lives, in the decisions that we make. That being blessed is not defined by your circumstances today. If you were to write the story of your life, a lot of you would not be where you're at today. But when you come to the point in your life that you realize that God has you right where you are for a divine purpose and a divine reason, then you start to feel that gratitude that we've been talking through from so many reasons and realize that you truly are blessed because the alternative of where that we could be or the alternative of our destiny could be much worse if we had to live out the consequences of our sin in our day-to-day lives. But we serve a God that loved you too much to do that and sent his son Jesus when you were in the midst of your sin. In the midst of your shame, you can find love, joy, and peace in the love of God today. Let's pray together this morning, and then we're going to dive into this word, blessed. God, I thank you for this morning. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to stand in front of my church family and just talk about what you've laid on my heart, God. I pray that you would continue to reveal yourself to us today, that your word would be spoken clearly, and that, God, we wouldn't leave this place today with just another New Year's resolution, but rather a revelation from you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want you to turn your Bibles today to Psalms. Psalms 1. Psalms 1, 1 through 3. Today we're going to talk about three things. We're going to talk about one thing we shouldn't do. One thing that we should do. And one promise that God has for our life. Is that easy enough to remember going into this new year? One thing that we shouldn't do. One thing that we should do. And one promise that God has for our life. If you're here in Psalms with me, say amen this morning. Amen. Amen. Psalms 1, 1 through 3 says this. Blessed is the person. What's that first word? Blessed is the person. Who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaves do not wither, and in whatever he does. He prospers. The first thing that we shouldn't do, 
The first, do not. The Bible says, do not walk in the counsel of the wicked. A blessed man this morning, if you want to be blessed, the very first thing he says that you're not to do is to walk in the counsel of the wicked. I looked up this word counsel in the original Hebrew. And this word is translated into a noun. It means something that provides direction or advice as to a decision or course of action. Something that provides direction or advice as to a decision or a course of action. Let me tell you what Satan's done. Satan has done an incredible job of making the wrong information so readily available that you turn to the wrong things before turning to an almighty God. This morning, what are you turning to for your advice? When something happens, when something goes wrong in your life, when you have a question in life, when you're seeking out answers in your life, when you find your place in the midst of the valley, when everything is going on around you, when you find yourself in a situation that you shouldn't be, what are you turning to today? What are you seeking advice from? Because that's going to shape your destiny. Who are you listening to today? Who are you drawing from? There's a natural progression that this talks about here. And I want you to think about this picture. Because nobody wakes up one day and says, today, I want to commit adultery. Today, I want to become addicted to drugs or alcohol. Today, I want to succumb to my lustful desires. Today, I want to be greedy. Today, I want to steal. These are not decisions that we just wake up one day and make. They're a consequence of multiple decisions that you've made in your life, that you've seeked advice and you've seeked wisdom and you've seeked knowledge and you've seeked direction from the wrong people in the wrong places at the wrong time. And you find yourself so far away from God that you make the wrong decisions and you find yourself buried in sin. You say, Dalton, how does this happen? The natural progression that it talks about here in Psalms. What does it say? It says, blessed is a person who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. What's it saying here? The apparent progression, this picture that he's talking about, is somebody that's walking right next to sin. The very first thing you do is you may not be partaking in it just yet. My mom always told me this. She said, Dalton, you're always one step away from stupid. It don't matter how good you are. It don't matter how many right decisions that you make. It don't matter how clean or close that you're walking to God today going into 2023. What we all have to realize is we're all one decision, one step away from stupid. And one step away from sin. So the first thing that we do is we flirt with sin. We walk next to it. We seek advice from ungodly friends and family. We turn to the internet. We turn to a doctor. We turn to these things besides God. And we're walking right next to sin. Maybe we're not partaking in it yet. But we're seeking counsel from the wicked. We're walking right next to it. The second progression that it talks about is you then stop and you stand and you take it all in. Let's say like this. Let's say you were out. You just went Christmas caroling. We just got past the the Christmas season. You were out with your church family. You were Christmas caroling. You were walking home. On your way home, there was a bar. First thing you did is you just were walking next to it, walking next to the bar. Then you get next to it, and you start to hear the music. That was pretty good. You stop, and you say, oh, that's. They sound like they're having fun. The first mistake that we made is we stopped. Because then your mind starts to wander. And you start to think, they sound like they're having more fun than me. Maybe I could just poke in there for a few minutes. I'm sure some of my old friends are there. I could catch up with them. So you walk in. And then you find yourself sitting in that place partaking in the same things of the world you find yourself in the midst of sin 
This is the progression that it's talking about in Psalms. That at first, we're just walking next to sin. We may not be partaking, but then it looks fun. You stop. And you begin to soak it in. That's what it's talking about in the second part of this picture, where it says you're just standing in the path of sinners. You're not partaking in the sin yet. You're just in the path of sinners, thinking that you can just hang out with them, be a part of them. Oh, I'm going to invite them to church. I'm going to make them better. God has me here for a reason. We use all of these excuses. Why? Because we think that our flesh is stronger than it is. But we don't realize that we're one step away from stupid. And we sit here and we, we're just around sinners. We're just in the path of sinners. And before you know it, just like the second part, third part of this scripture, it says, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. Now you're in the midst of it. Now you're sitting down at the table, partaking in everything that we have today. If you want to be blessed today, according to the Bible, the first thing that you cannot do is you cannot seek advice from the wrong source. Because you will be tricked, you will be fooled every single time. When the Bible talks about that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and the Bible talks about that Satan roams around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, that word devour in the original language literally means to be ripped apart from the inside out. So many of us think that it's going to be obvious when Satan comes and attacks us. But that's not the case. He's smarter than that. He attacks you from the inside out so that you don't see it coming. He infiltrates you with your relationships, with your friendships, with the advice that you're seeking out, with what you're reading, with what you're looking at, with what you're listening to, with what you're around on a day-to-day basis. And it gets inside of you and it corrupts your mind. It corrupts your heart. It corrupts your eyes. And before you know it, you're being ripped apart at the seam saying, how did I let this happen? It was one stupid mistake at a time. And God is saying we need to get rid of those access points that Satan has in our hearts, in our lives today. So what's the second part say? We just talked about the do nots. The second part is the do. What does it say in the second part? Delight in the law of the Lord. And on his law meditates day and night. Delight in the law of the Lord. This morning and in 2023 and in our lives, if you want to continue or start to live a life that's blessed, we have to be guided only by the word of God. I've said this before in front of you, and I want to reiterate it again. So many of us say, I don't know what it means to talk to God. Or I don't believe I've ever heard a word from God. I want to hear from God. And you'll come down here to these altars and you'll pour your hearts out and you'll lay everything down here. But then you'll go back and you'll leave and you'll live the same life that you've always lived. And what I want you to realize and what I've said before is if you go home and you close your Bible, then you are closing the mouth of God. Because the Bible says in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was was God. If you want direction from God today, if you want to hear God speak to you, if you want to be led into a path of righteousness, if you want to live in eternal prosperity, I'm not talking about receive all the great blessings that the world says that it calls to be blessed, but if you want to be blessed by God today, then in 2023, make it a mission that every day, I'm going to open my word and I'm going to talk to God. I'm going to have a relationship with him. I'm going to seek wise counsel from the one who is almighty and all wise and all knowing. There's some great people out there, some great pastors, some great scholars, but there is none that knows more than my father in heaven does. He's all knowing. He's all powerful. And so if we made a commitment as a church 
that we're going to get closer to God, how do we do that? The first way that we do that is we open the mouth of God and open in our words together. Pray. Talk to him. If I want a relationship with my wife, then every day I have to sit down with her, talk to her, get to know her, spend time with her, quality time. Not just tell her, how, how mad do you think my wife would get at me if I come home and for a straight hour I sat there and I hit her with all the problems that I had on that day. Well, Courtney, listen, I had this happen to me. This patient come in. It was very challenging. I had this, 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 and this. And then... I cut off the conversation and went to bed. Is that a relationship? No. You know what a relationship is? The Bible talks about meditating. Meditating on his word day and night. What that means is, is I read something. I ask God for something. I read his promises. And then I meditate on it. I shut my loud mouth. And I listen to what the Lord is trying to show me. And if we'll spend time with our mouth closed and our hands open wide in worship and in prayer and in meditation, then you will see that God is trying to answer your prayers around you if you're just smart enough to see it. And to get out of the line of sinners. And to let go of our old ways and the things that so easily entangle us like the Bible talks about. And say, God, I don't know why I am where I am or, or what purpose that you have for my life. But I'm going to trust you and I'm going to follow you and I'm going to do what you say to do. That's what meditation is. Meditate on it day and night. To know God is to read his word. To know God is to read his word. Is, is that not seem too easy it seems like common sense and, and when I was when I was reading this and the Lord was laying it on my heart I was like God I want to give him some meat and he said this is all the meat that you need because this will change your life if you follow it and you listen to it we talked about the do not we talked about the do now the last thing is the promise if you delight in the law of the Lord, meditate on it day and night. If you say, I'm not going to walk in the counsel of the wicked. I'm not going to stand in the path of sinners. I'm not going to sit in the seat of the sinner or the scoffer. I'm going to delight in the law of the Lord. The promise that he has is that you will prosper in everything you do. Listen to this. It says, he will be like a tree planted by streams of water. Which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. And in whatever he does, he will prosper. Listen, there's nothing special about the tree that it's talking about there. If you were to take that same tree and you were to plant it in the desert, you know what would happen to it? It would start to dry up. Its leaves would wither off and it would die. If you're in here today... And you feel like you have no life in this place today. If you feel like that tree that's withered up with your leaves falling off. If you feel like that you can't get things together. If you feel like that your life is scattered to and from. I would ask you this. Where's your tree planted? Are you planted in the desert where there is no life? Or are you planted next to the stream of life where your roots can grow deep? Where I don't care if a storm comes up in my life. It can blow me to and from. It may blow a few leaves off. But because I'm planted by the stream of life, my fruit will come back ever greater than it did before. Because I'm not defined by my circumstances. I'm not defined by my situations. You may beat me up on the outside, but internally in my roots, I have life in Jesus Christ. And that's what I pray for you today. Is I pray for life. If God's going to move in our church and in our communities, if our world is going to be reached with the gospel of Jesus Christ, there's only one way to do it. And that's to shut up shop right next to him. This morning, I want you to think about something. And this is a crazy illustration. Like I said, I'm a simple-minded man. This morning in this place, you're one of three animals. The first thing that you are today, many of us are, is a worm. Just an old earthworm. An earthworm just exists. Wherever it lands, 
It just exists. It digs itself, it buries itself in a hole, it tries not to be seen. Why? Because there's so many predators that's out to get it, right? You've got the birds, you've got the animals, you've got fishermen that snatch them up and throw them in a refrigerator for two weeks until they go and use it as bait to catch food. They have no defense mechanism. When it rains or the storms of life come, what happens? They have to rise to the surface or they die. They end up getting stuck on the concrete in the sun and they wither up and die. That's a lot of us here today. Why is that? Because you don't have a relationship with Jesus. If you're here today and you say, Dalton, I feel like a worm. I have no defense mechanisms. I feel beat up. I feel thrown to and from, just landing wherever I'm at. I have no game plan. I feel beat up and my life feels dead. Maybe it's because you haven't planted yourself in the streams of life today. And he wants to change that today. And we're going to talk about how to do that in the middle in a minute. The second thing that you may be today is a deer. A deer is somebody who has a relationship with Jesus. And we have some defense mechanisms. You may know a few verses. You come to church. You read your Bible sometimes. But you still don't take hold of the power that you have. So you spend your whole life in hiding, skittish, scared to death of what Satan may throw at you. If you've ever seen a deer in the woods, you come up, the first sound that they hear, they're running off. You can be dead still and quiet. They can hear a limb break. And they're off and running. They're skittish. You may confront them. They may fight just a little bit. But eventually, they're hunted and succumb and die. Get hit by cars. Hit by, the, by hunters. Things of life. Some of us are dear today. You may be Christians today, but you don't take hold of the power that we have in Jesus. You just exist in the world. Trying to stay low. Stay camouflaged. What I want you to be today is a fish called a remora. Remora. Have you ever heard of that word? Have you ever, how many people's watched Shark Week? I used to love Shark Week until it started giving me nightmares and now I can't watch it much anymore. A remora is the fish that you always see attached to the gills of the shark. A remora in and of itself is not a strong creature. But a remora is smart enough to know that if I attach myself to the apex predator in the ocean, then nothing can happen to me. We also call it a sucker fish. It finds the biggest and baddest shark in the ocean. It says, I'm attaching myself to him. He sticks itself to the side of that. Wherever that shark goes, day or night, that fish is stuck to that shark. Why? Because as long as he's with that shark, he knows that he's protected and he's safe. Do you know what true wisdom is going into 2023? True wisdom is realizing our weaknesses. True wisdom is saying, Dalton, I know that I'm not strong enough. I know that I'm not smart enough. I know that I'm not good enough for the promises that God has for me. But if I attach myself to the one who is good enough and the one who is strong enough and the one who is smart enough and is wise enough, then I'll never be led astray. Because no matter what situation I find myself in, no matter how troubled the waters get, no matter how great the storm is, no matter who comes around you or who tries to come up against you, you know that you cannot be touched as long as that shark is alive. And today we realize that we serve a God who's eternal. Our anchor is in God. It's in the sacrifice that Jesus made. Today, who are you attached to? Who are you relying on? Who do you put your faith in? Who do you put your hope in? Who are you seeking counsel from today? Where's your tree planted? What God is showing you today is that if you have things out of order in your life, that we serve a God of order that can take all of your problems, all of your guilt, all of your shame, all of your past, all of your failures, 
He can pick you up. He can make you brand new. A new creation created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which he prepared in advance for us to do. God loves you. If you're here today and you say, Dalton, I feel just like that worm. I feel out of place. I feel uncomfortable. I'm scared. I have no defense mechanism. Everything in my life is out of order. Today, God wants to get your life back in order. Today, God wants you to have eternal life. He doesn't want you to live this life alone. He loves you too much to just let you wander along helplessly, hoping that Satan doesn't find you. What kind of life is that? In 2023, let's quit living and hiding as Christians. Let's stand up. Let's make our voice heard. He wants you to know that your life has purpose, that you're loved. Not just any kind of love that we felt from the world. You're loved with a reckless type of love that only the king of heaven could come down and prove and say, God loves you. He wants to have a relationship with you today. But in order to live a life that's blessed, you see, it's not anything that God has to do. Because God's already promised it in His Word. And if He's promised it in His Word, it's done. You can count on it. You can take it to the bank. Deposit it. It's finished. When He took His last breath on the cross, what did He say? It is finished. So why keep fighting what He's trying to do in your life? It's a decision we have to make today to be blessed. I'm not going to walk next to sin any longer. I'm not going to stand in the path of sin any longer. I'm not going to sit on this throne of sin any longer. I'm going to get up and I'm going to walk towards an almighty God. And I'm going to trust that wherever he is that I'm protected. If you're here today, you say, Dalton, I've never entered into a relationship with him. What better way to start 2023? than being completely forgiven of your past and sin and being placed in righteousness with our Father in heaven. Today, if that's you and you say, Dalton, I know that I'm a sinner and I know I messed up and I know I don't have a relationship with Jesus. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth, Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you do that, the Bible talks about that he will spread your sin as far as the east is to the west. Now, I want you to think about this. If I had a globe here in front of you today, and I were to go north, eventually, I'm going to reach the top of earth, and I'm going to start going south. So you can measure the distance between the north pole and the south pole. You can measure that distance with a mile percentage. You know what you can't measure? You cannot measure the distance from east to west. Because if you were to get in a plane and you were to take off going east, it don't matter how far around that globe, you'll still be going east. So when the Bible says that he spreads your sin as far as the east is to the west, it has meaning in your life today. It means that it's over. It's done with. You will never find it again unless you seek it out and pick it back up yourself. You can have true forgiveness of sin today if you put your faith in Jesus. And you say, God, I believe that you sent your son Jesus to die. I believe that he rose again on the third day. And you put your faith in him, then you will start 2023 with the greatest gift that you can get, and that's eternal life. You say, Dalton, how do you have so much peace today? Knowing that your grandmother passed away just a few hours ago. (laughs) It's because just a few sleeps for me here on earth that I'm going to be with her eternally in heaven. That's what it means to be blessed. I'm not scared to, to let my light shine and live my faith wherever I am because the worst that you can do to me is send me to an almighty God. Send me to a place of righteousness. So why live in fear today? Why hide your light under a bush? In 2023, the Lord wants you to be blessed. He wants us to let our light shine. Will you stand with me with your heads bowed and eyes closed? If you're here today and you say, Dalton, I've never entered into a relationship with Jesus. And I want to know him today for the first time as my personal Lord and Savior. 
If that's you today, with your mouth and with faith in your heart, I want you to say this with me. I want you to say, dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And I know that my sin separates me from you. I pray that you'll forgive me of my sin. I believe that Jesus came. He lived a perfect life. He died on the cross. But three days later, he rose from the dead. And he's still alive today in heaven. God, I put my faith in him. I trust you today, Lord. And I give you my life. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We're so glad that you joined us in service today. And we pray that God moved in your life in a, in a very special way. We pray that, that you enjoyed it and, and, and that, that God just touched your heart. And today, we want to make sure we don't ever leave a service without giving an opportunity for everybody to make the greatest decision that you could ever make in your life. God's word says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And, and his word teaches us that if we believe he is who he says he is and he did what he said he would do, that, that if we believe that he died on the cross for our sins, that God our Father raised him up from the dead and we profess him as Lord and Savior of our life, that we could be saved. And today, praying, if you haven't made that decision, God and God only knows the heart of every person. 1 Kings 8 and 39. You know your heart. God knows your heart. If you haven't made that decision, I pray that you make that decision. And, and even to think about it, what do you have to lose? Today, you didn't tune in by chance or coincidence. You didn't tune in, you know what, by chance happening. You're here by divine appointment. So if you haven't made that decision, I pray that you make that decision today. And if you do, we want to hear from you. We want to know what took place in your life. The bottom of the screen, you'll see a number, the app, the website, that you can reach out to us and let us know what's happening. And if you got prayer requests, if you're watching and you got prayer requests, we got people praying all the time. Let us know. Send your request to us and we promise you, we're going to, to, to put it before folks and we're going to put it before God. And if you get those answers, you know what? Let us know. Let us know what's happening with you. If you want to come at any time, we'd love to have you to be a part. You're a part of our church family right now. We'd love to have you. If you want to come here, we'd love to see you. I want to thank you again for, for joining us today and thank you for, for just being with us and know that, that, you know what, God's got you. He loves you and so do we. You have a blessed day and know that, that you know what, this day is the day the Lord made, so rejoice and be glad in it. We love you. Have a blessed day.